Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 2D platform game in Unity. In today's video, we're going to be going over adding some jumping into our character, and we're also going to create some camera following. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our script. And right here in our void update, we're going to make a new if statement. We're going to say if input dot get key down, and then we're going to make a parentheses and we're going to put key code dot space. And so we'll add another bracket just to make everything look clean. And now we're going to go over this because everything is a little different from what we did before. So right here I wrote get key down instead of get key. And there's a big difference, well not a big difference, but there is a difference between what type of code you're going to write in. So when you put get key down, what it means is that it will continually hit A as long as you hold the key down. So that allows our character to keep moving as we hold the key. We'll just hit save and we'll just look at this visually for a second. So our character keeps moving as long as we hold our A and D key down, as opposed to when we write get key down, it's only going to happen once. He's only going to jump when, only, he's only going to jump once for every time we hit the key. So in order to code in his movements, we're going to write rb dot velocity and that's going to equal to new oops new vector 2 I'm a little sloppy and it's we're going to write something new here rb dot velocity dot x comma and we'll put in our y direction 10f so like up here we have our rigid body we want it to have velocity we wanted to give it a new vector 2 for the direction we we're going in, but we put something different here. We didn't put a hard number like we did here. We put 5 and negative 5 for our movements in the direction we wanted. And here, remember, we wanted we don't want them to go up or down when we hit our side-to-side -side movement key, so we put 0. But And you would have thought, well, why didn't we put 0 here when we wrote rb.velocity.x? Why did we write this here? And Right here is actually the movement we want to go into the y direction, which is 10 spaces or 10 units. And then we also put this f here. I'll get to the f in a minute, but let's just go back to why we wrote this here. So when we go back into, actually, did I save this? There we go. When we go back into our editor and we hit play, and normally when you want a game, you want to move and be able to kind of do oh he slides a lot we kind of want to do sort of a running jump and he also rotates we'll fix this in a second so we'll just leave him like this even though it's kind of funny so we kind of want when we want to do things we want to we want him to have still have velocity in the x direction as we're running like that so that is made possible by writing rb.velocity.x. If I were to put 0 here, like that, we wouldn't have that when we hit our jump button. If I hit play, and I move it, and I hit up, I don't get that running jump movement. He just goes straight up because I told, I told the code that his movement in the x direction, in this direction, is zero every time I hit this button. However, when I write rb dot velocity, if you want to go back and correct yourself, you just hit this button right here. So by writing rb dot velocity dot x, I keep that momentum, that velocity in the x direction, whenever. Might have to restart it there. Whenever 
I hit that space bar. And now we have a couple other things to fix here because every time I hit the space bar, he just goes up and up into the sky. And we're going to get to that in another video, actually. There's going to be another video where we're going to clean up all our movements and make them more precise. Right now, we're just getting our movements down. And in the future, we're, next videos, we're going to be adding our animation. And then we're going to be tightening down all our controls. The next thing we want to do is we want to stop that sort of flipping motion. So we're going to go here to our player. And if we go down to our rigid 2D body here, if we go down, you have this constraints. And then you have a freeze position and you have freeze rotation in the Z direction. And I didn't show you this before, but if you go up here to this 2D right here in our scene and click it, it puts it into a 3D mode. We've only been looking at it onto a 2D scale because that's how everything's written, but there is a 3D here. And if you can see, here's my Y axis, here's my X axis that we've been moving along. And right here, even though you didn't see it, was a Z axis. So it's rotating about this Z axis and that's why it's flipping. So to control that, we can create this constraint here and we can click Z, we can go back into our 2D, and that should take care of our flipping. And now just to go over that, he has these sort of, these movements that, where he's not stopping, he's not moving very precisely. Now there are ways to fix that over here in the rigid 2D body where we have our linear drag is zero. That's why he's sort of just sliding away like that. We can fix that by adding drag to it. By adding drag basically is a force that would counteract the movement in the x direction. So he's moving this way and we're going to add a little bit of force to give it a little more precise movement. However, this isn't really optimum. Actually, it didn't oh, it didn't take because I didn't hit it there. So We'll add our drag. Now we should see a little more precise stopping. See, he doesn't slide anymore. However, you don't really want to use this as the controller of your drag so much because, see, as you can see, it sort of stymies his ability to jump and retain that little bit of... Uh, sort of momentum in this direction as he jumps. So we don't we don't want to really mess with it here. We want to put our more precise movements into our code, which like I said, we'll be doing in future videos. Right now we're just establishing our movements. So now that that's done, let's go back into our code for a second. And earlier I put this F here and I said I was going to explain it. So in the world of coding, the computer allocates memory for different things. You know, somewhere in the computer it allocated a piece of memory for our little RB here that we designated and likewise for whenever we put a number. However the way it allocates memory for numbers different differs upon which what kind of number you use. This right here this 5 would be listed as an int and let's just say we'll create an int it stands for integer we'll create an integer and we'll just call it x dri for x direction and we'll put equal to 5. So it allocates a certain amount of space in the memory for this number five and it's allocating it as an integer and I can go ahead and I can put this here as x direction and it's perfectly fine with that. It means it, it actually encoding you can I can designate something here by a name and then drive it into this space right here and it's going to mean the same thing to it. However, and an integer is any number that doesn't have a decimal for lack of a better way of explaining it. So it will be 0, 1, 2, 3 and it can even be negative 1, 2, or 3 as long as it doesn't have a decimal. So let's just, now that we've described that, get rid of that for a second. And as you can see here, when I got rid of that it turned red because I no, I no longer have a reference for this. It doesn't know what this is because I didn't, it, I didn't create anything to tell it what x direction is. But when we put our 5 back in, let's say I say 5.3. Let's say instead of 
just moving five spaces in the x direction I want to you know make it a little more specific about 5.3 but it it can't understand the decimal because it didn't allocate a space in the memory that wasn't a non decimalized number so the way I can do that is I put this little F here to designate that I'm using a float that I'm using a number that has a decimal in it so that way it will allocate the space in the memory for it so that is why I put this down here. It didn't really make a difference for what we're doing right now, but I just wanted to be able to show you the differences in how you have to use numbers in coding. So we'll just go back to R5. And it's very important to understand how memory is used in coding. It might not seem so apparent in uh, our project here because it's a small project, but when you do larger projects, how you, how you manage your memory is very very important because memory can sometimes tie up processing speeds so you if you're not using let's say a lot of memory and you don't need to use you know memory for a decimalized number then there's no reason to use it don't you you don't have to just put floats everywhere however you do have to understand how and when you have to use these things so we'll hit save just to get back to normal So that's a little information about ints and floats. We'll be going over this more specifically in the future. Let's go back into our editor for a minute and we're gonna go over one final thing. We're gonna go up here to window again and we're gonna go to 2D and we're gonna go grab our, remember this guy, our tile palette and we're gonna add a little more terrain to our uh, scene here. Actually, before that, we'll put this, actually, we'll just take this here and we'll just stick it right there for now. And before that, we're going to grab our blue background. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to hit the word duplicate. And this is just going to create another background, but you can't see it right now because it's right on top of this one. If I were to hit this move tool button right up here to the left, you can see I have some directional arrows. And if I were to grab this one in the X direction and slide it, there is our new background. And we're just going to line him up right there. We'll slide on over. And now we can have a little more extension to our scene here. And he's exactly, I hit duplicate, he is exactly the same thing as the, uh, as the previous one. He's, he's in the same sorting layer and everything. So going back to our tile palette, we'll just add a little more we want this little block here we'll just add a little more ground like this over here like we did before we'll add a little more of this here like so that's good enough for the example I want to do right now and so oops we gotta get out of this so let's just close it to get out of it for a second and now, as you can see, when I hit play, when I move our character, he goes off the screen, like so. But in reality, he's over here. But we can't see him in the game. And I can move back and see him. That's because the camera is stuck in this one spot right here. So a quick way of dealing with this, there, there are many different ways of making uh, camera follow character. But a quick way of doing this is we're going to take our, car our camera and we're going to drag it down over to our player, like so. And now our camera is a child of our player. Wherever our player moves, our camera is going to move with him. And we're going to move along and now he follows our character into the next part of the scene. So we're going to stop there for right now. Now I know as you're playing around with your character, he's very awkward and the controls are very awkward. That's fine. This is kind of where we want to be at right now because we're, and we also have this eternal jumping thing, but we're going, we're basically just going over some basics of movement and coding right now. And in the next few videos, we're going to be building on what we're doing and add more complexity and more refinement to the game we're making. So stay tuned, it's going to be a lot more fun. So as always, thank you for watching, like my video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. All links are in the description below. See you next time.